Right here on the table, we've got all these pieces that have come together over the last few months, and we're gonna be putting them together and making one epic Assassin's Creed Odyssey build. And this is probably the most interesting part of the build right here. This is the i5 6500 TE. Now, it's a low power consumption, low TDP rated uh, four core, four threaded i5 on sixth gen. But there is a little bit of a trick here with the Z170 Pro Gaming motherboard. We can put in a custom BIOS and that will enable overclocking on this four core. So we're gonna see how well, once we overclock the CPU, the game can run on it. But we've also got this right here that we picked up for a real good price. This is the Sapphire Nitro RX 580. We got this for 230 Aussie dollars. It's pretty much one of the best RX 580s you can get. It also looks the best in my opinion too. Really wicked looking card. Then going through storage, we've got our typical SSD and hard drive for backup. And then we've got a cooler here that was just uh, sort of thrown in with the mix when I got this motherboard. And we've also got this DDR4 memory that we pulled out of a build that I recently got on the channel uh, with the 5820K. I'll put the link up here if you guys want to check out that deals hunt. Then we've got this 700 watt Antec power supply that someone threw in for free when I bought a heap of PCs off them. Apparently it's got a noisy fan, so that should be pretty easy to replace. We'll be pulling that apart, seeing what we can do with that. And then down here we've got a CM Storm case. This thing is uh, pretty dirty, it needs some tech yes loving. But after we're done cleaning this all up, it should be looking like a race car ready to ride some horses. So we did test the power supply and there was a bit of noise coming out of it. I just wasn't sure if it was the fan or not. So I quickly cut off the fan and uh, we're going to test it one more time now and see if it is indeed the actual power supply making the noise. And it actually is. Now something like this is pretty dangerous, so the easiest way to completely power it off is just turn it off at the switch and then let this motherboard here drain all the power out. As you can see here, the power is going through the motherboard, so let that drain out completely and then there should be no charge left in the power supply. But we can pretty much chuck this in the bin because, yeah, I, it, it works, which is really strange. I've never seen this before, a power supply that makes some really weird noise, but actually still works absolutely fine. That's a shame, because the cooler as well, the other cooler we had, didn't fit either. So, uh, we're using this Noctua cooler I've had sitting around here for a long time, and so, things like this do add cost to the build, unfortunately, because now we're going to have to use another power supply and we're using another cooler already. But these are the problems you do come into when you are building used PCs, unfortunately. And this is all I've got on hand at the moment. I got this on an eBay sale for 40 Aussie dollars. <laughs> Never heard of the brand before, Game Max, but hopefully it doesn't blow up. So let's give it a shot.
Last night we were trying to overclock this thing a lot and we got max uh, B clock on the motherboard at 180. It seems to be topping out there and uh, it just won't go any higher and that's about 4.14 gigahertz unfortunately. I'd like to go higher. I know the CPU definitely can do it but I think the motherboard's holding it back. Uh, if you guys remember like back in the H55, P55 and X58 era, the motherboard's B clock can become a limiting factor and I think that's what's uh, become of this sort of CPU and motherboard combo here. So not too impressed with this overclock. We will try some different memory just to rule out uh, the DDR4 that's currently in there. And here we are now after playing those games we're at conclusion time and this PC ended up now costing me about 570 Aussie dollars or if you're in the US about 400 US dollars as we're going through we had to change the power supply because it was literally letting off some weird crackling noise and that wasn't the fan either so I've never seen that before and then we had the cooler we had to change that over because it just didn't fit and along the way we came into some different problems like the CPU not being able to get as high as I'd liked it to so we ended up settling for 4.14 gigahertz even trying some different memory out didn't help that so we stuck with the original DDR4 Corsair memory we got that to 2666 megahertz and at these speeds it did a phenomenal job of playing games with the RX 580 at first I thought it was an RX 570 but that's because I just had the initial Windows uh, installed drivers that get pre-installed from Windows Update on that rig and then we updated the drivers and it was funny because I was playing Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey and at first I was like these this FPS numbers are way too low and I'm seeing an RX 570 pop up and I'm like damn did I get hosed with this graphics card and I thought no way and then updated the drivers and the performance literally doubled in this game just by a driver update so that was impressive I then had my RX 580 becoming unlocked from the driver update which again I've 
never seen that before either, pretty weird. And then speaking of Assassin's Creed Odyssey itself, it played really nicely on low and high settings. Low settings seem to stress out the CPU a little bit more and match it sort of 100% to 100% with the RX 580. And we did overclock uh, the RX 580 and got some decent overclocks out of that too. We got to 1430 megahertz, and then the memory went up to 2250 megahertz, which is quad pumped. And then going back into Odyssey and changing it to high settings, the GPU was again sitting at 100% and the CPU was being a little bit less utilized. So the results were pretty similar though. I mean, graphically this game looks really nice at high settings. Uh, but low settings you'll get a little bit more fps but i'd honestly just stick it at high settings for this title and it did honestly have a lot less stuttering i actually didn't notice any visible stuttering at all playing in the normal game mode as opposed to the previous assassin's creed origin which i've played and that had some real noticeable hiccups and stuttering so they've definitely improved it compared to the previous installment now we decided to boot up this new game called ring of Asylum. And it was free to play and it was surprisingly really fun. It's like a mix between Fortnite and also PUBG, except they've got sort of both things right from the get go. The game is really well optimized and it's also a lot of fun. It sort of takes both elements and it has that more realistic look that I honestly do prefer with PUBG over Fortnite's cartoon style graphics. And the good news is it plays really well. So optimized both on the CPU, utilizing near 100% on those four cores a lot of the time. And then the graphics card as well at 100% at 1080p was being utilized too. So it does seem like it's a little bit hungry for GPU power, but once you stop it down to low settings, you'll still get a really good look and a really enjoyable experience. But do stay tuned. I will be doing a cheap potato for this PC title in particular, since it is free to play. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there will wanna see what's the cheapest we could do this title for, because I do see this game, Ring of Asylum, taking off and being the next sort of PUBG and Fortnite, in my opinion. It's looking really nice, and honestly, it's actually a lot of fun. I do, from my first get-go, prefer it over PUBG and both Fortnite, and I played a lot of PUBG as well, so that's saying something. This title's actually pretty cool. But as you guys know, sometimes I don't get things 100% all the time. I usually come into little problems. Sometimes I come into big problems. And this build just had these problems that just popped up all the way through the build. Uh, again, the biggest thing that disappointed me was probably those overclocks not going anywhere near what I wanted them to go to. I would have been happy with around 4.6 gigahertz, which I know these CPUs, especially the four cores, are capable of doing. But since it had such a low multiplier being the 6500 TE, it just wouldn't go any higher than 4.14 gigahertz, putting the onus back on the motherboard. The uh, Noctua cooler, I'll probably change that over for something like a $10 cooler that's a lot cheaper, since it's now not putting out really any heat at all. And also that problem with the power supply, I mean, what was going on there? It was making some weird clicking noise and that wasn't the fan either. We cut the fan off and that is really dangerous. That could like, seriously, I don't know. I've never seen a power noise like that before that still booted up the PC. So I think it's something crazy waiting to happen. But with all that aside, everything ended up working out in the end. If you're gonna do the Z170 overclock, uh, the non-K overclock, I'd recommend going for something with a higher multiplier for starters. But when all said and done, this is a PC that not only has good price performance still, it does perform really well with that RX 580, doing a great job. It also looks pretty decent. I am digging that front uh, LED fan, the red fan on this uh, build. Plus the case was a breeze to build in. And I mean, we did come into some problems, but that's what happens sometimes when you build and use PCs. But in the end, we still have a PC that plays games really well and it still has pretty decent price performance. Not the best price performance that I'm used to providing you guys, but nonetheless, it does get up and go and that RX 580 does look really good and it does perform really well too. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind with the Z170 non-K overclock, something that's important to mention is you may come into some problems with the temperatures sitting at 100 degrees, even though they're nowhere near 100 degrees. And so that's something to keep in mind. Also, the C states don't work properly. Some of those notes that they said in that custom BIOS update will apply depending on the motherboard you use. And of course, I would recommend going with something with a higher multiplier. So probably not going with these T or TE CPU SKUs unless you get a good motherboard that you know goes really high on the B clock. And that's about it for today's budget build. If you guys enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button and let us know in the comment section below. Have you either tried the new Ring of Asylum or the Assassin's Creed Odyssey, or have you played both? We'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on these titles. 
And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye. And also, I delitted the CPU, and I really didn't need to delit it because, yeah, 4.14 gigahertz, such a letdown.